All right, so we're checking a couple of new products from Radio Master. Uh, we've got a receiver here and a USB UART tool. So this receiver is called the RP4TD. This is their newest um, True Diversity receiver. It's um, actually like the previous one that came out, the RP3, I believe, had two antennas. It was not True Diversity, it was Antenna Diversity, because it only had a single um, RF chip, the SX1281. This one here has two uh, separate processors. So it's got two SX1281 chips and it has uh, two of the uh, TCXOs or the temperature compensated crystal oscillators. So basically this is uh, you know, gonna be more resilient in a wide variety of temperature scenarios. Um, this is mainly gonna be for those of you that are looking for the best possible reception in maybe the most challenging environments and or we want, you want to go super far away on 2.4 gigahertz. So the package comes with the receiver, which I'll show you a close up here what it looks like here on one side. You got your four pads over here, boot button, UFL connectors for your antennas. And here is the other side. And I believe these are updated antennas as well. Uh, more robust center here and uh, this should be a little bit more durable overall. You do get a set of wires here, four wires for your connection to your flight controller, and you get three pieces of clear heat shrink. And with this particular receiver with two separate RF chips, you have two telemetry outputs at 100 milliwatts each. Now the length of the wire here from the connector on the receiver to the end here is 65 millimeters. I was kind of hoping that they would have something a little longer. I believe they sell longer ones as a um, separate purchase, you probably want to pick some of those up. If you're going to be putting this into something like a bigger build, like a seven or eight inch build. Uh, so, cause you know, the receiver is going to go somewhere in the, like around the flight controller area, but then typically people with these on um, the arms or, or below the arms, uh, something like that. And so these need to be a bit longer. So they're basically got further separation and that will, you know, basically, ensure that your reception to this receiver isn't going to get cut off because of you know antenna placement because you want to put these both the antennas in places where they're both going to be very basically not blocked by any part of the quad no matter what orientation the quad is relative to the transmitter all right so the other product is this uh, usb your tool I'm not sure if it has a particular name so basically uh, this is another way of flashing your express LRS receivers uh, typically in the in the configurator interface, it'll say UART. Obviously, most people use Wi-Fi or um, Betaflight pass-through is a typical way of flashing the receivers. But th this is sort of like um, a way of flashing in, in case of emergency, like for whatever reason, you're not able to flash it via Wi-Fi, can't connect to it, or the Betaflight pass-through isn't working for you. So nice little tool to have uh, kind of just, just in case. Um, it does have all sorts of like reverse polarity protection, etc. You're gonna plug this into your computer and it's gonna come up as a USB device. So you have a variety of different ways of flashing your receivers and connecting them with the accessories that are included. So these are basically, obviously you wanna to connect to the four pins on your uh, receiver. So you have RX, TX, plus and minus. You can set your voltage either 3.3 volts or five volts via the switch here. Uh, there's also another, um, uh, port over here with your RX, TX, and plus and minus. We, you can use this cable here, plugs in over here, and these are going to be for those receivers that have the corresponding plug over here. It's the same one. Some of the, uh, the PWM receivers that I, re I reviewed recently, they have this particular port, and so you can um, uh, flash those receivers via this connector and this connector here to that receiver. And that's because typically on those PWM receivers, they're not going to be connected to a flight controller. So the only way you can flash those is via Wi-Fi or via this uh, particular tool. The other way to flash is through this port here and these, I guess they're calling these DuPont wires. I guess they're, they're kind of like server wires. And you can either use this uh, Pogo probe. So basically you connect these here on, on this on this end over here. And then on the other end, this, this is like a spring-loaded probe and you can uh, basically connect it to the, the basically the receiver pads like this. And it does have uh, the ability to sort of, pr you can press down on it like 
like so. And you can see the, the little spring action going there. So let me see if I can get this to focus. You just kind of press it in here and then hold. And that way you can uh, flash a whole bunch of receivers in this manner really quickly. And you do have to uh, hold down the bootloader button to put the receiver into bootloader mode uh, before you plug in the, uh, the this little tool into your in, into the uh, USB port on your computer. So this uh, basically before this gets power and before the receiver gets power, you have to press and hold the bootloader button to put it into uh, bootloader mode for this tool to work and one thing to be aware of is if you have some of those really really tiny receivers that don't have a bootloader button but you have to um, bridge i think it's like ground or, or one of the other i forget which one it is to a certain pad uh, then you have to do that first before you use this tool so you can use either the, this pogo probe like so or you can use these i guess little wire grabbers so you would um for example, you would put this in here like this, and you got one for each different color. So you got white, green, black, and red. And then they have this uh, little spring grab or spring loaded end here, and you can you can see this little wire grabber comes out, and you can um, typically you want to use this if like the receiver's already soldered onto something, and you can grab onto the wire that is soldered onto the pad. In this case, I'll just grab onto the pad itself, like so. Uh, probably it'd be easier to, uh, for a non-soldered receiver to use the pogo adapter. That would probably be better, but you can also go this method as well, and you can see it, once it grabs on, it should stay on there. You wanna make sure that you don't have any of the other ones touching the other probes, and you might be uh, shorting something, so. Uh, can use this as well. So it's kind of nice you have all these little ad uh, adapters and accessories that go with the tool itself so that you can uh, easily flash your receivers. Just make sure that you're pressing and holding the bootloader button down when you uh, power up the receiver. All right, so that'll cover this video. I'll put links down in the video description if you guys want to check these out. Got any questions, let me know. Talk to you guys in the next video.